So a little bit about the ERAS application, we will start there because it is very important as the deadline draws near to talk about some of the essential tips that I have for you. So the basics. So we would advise submitting by September 27th. ERAS, although you spend a lot of money on it every single year, it commonly will crash because there are so many applicants that are trying to get on close to the deadline. We want to ensure that you are certified prior to the 29th so that you do not have any technical glitches or malfunctions, or let's say you happen to lose power from a terrible natural disaster. We want to ensure that you have the ability to submit that ERAS application on time. It's also important that you not only register for ERAS, but you also register for the NRMP. This is really important because you want to be able to rank programs at the end of your interview season, and you don't want to have to pay a late fee if you register for NRMP late. So the essential parts of the ERAS application, let's start with the biographical information, which is at the start of your application. This is information that you will be able to change. So let's say you have a change in address during interview season, or you lose your iPhone and you have to change your phone number. So this is a part of the application that'll actually be able to make changes to aside from the photo. So your photo does matter. It does not need to be taken by a professional photographer, but make sure that you have good lighting, that you are in professional attire, and ensure that it is of good high quality so it's not blurry when someone would print out your application and see the photo. Your photo might be used so that they can remember you. Some programs don't even look at a photo anymore when trying to determine who to interview and who to not interview, but your photo will be essential later on when they're trying to remember who exactly you were since they interview so many different numbers of people depending upon the program that you're applying to. We would recommend using a personal email address rather than a school email account. A lot of people think, well, my school email account looks more professional. Shouldn't I do that? Well, unfortunately, there are a lot of issues with school accounts. So a personal email address like Gmail, they're managed by companies that actually have more bandwidth and are generally more reliable. Also, you tend to get notifications from personal email addresses more quickly. So it's more immediate when you want to respond to an interview request. Also, institutional email addresses, unfortunately, will block important emails. So one of my friends, she applied into urology, which goes through the San Francisco match, and she actually put her school email address and missed out on three interviews because the university blocked some of those emails that came through. The experience section. So include what truly matters. I know that all of you guys are doing such incredible things in medical school. You did a lot in college you, and you may have had even really cool leadership opportunities in high school. But unfortunately, we don't want to hear about all of it. Try not to overload the application with too many small things because that dilutes all your major accomplishments. Just recognize that a lot of programs are getting a thousand applications throughout the interview season. And when they're looking at the application, they're spending probably about 10 minutes, if that, looking through all of your accomplishments. You want to have the ones that stand out. Very often we get asked, well, what about college? Can I include, you know, opportunities from there? Well, certainly. If you are a Division I, II, III athlete, those are really essential things to include because those show a lot of traits about you as a person when you are an athlete that are really important for a program to see. If you have leadership roles, for example, in your sorority or your fraternity or in your community service club in college, or you are the president of University of North Carolina Chapel Hill as a student, we want to see all of those things highlighted in your application because those are all essential to see that you led a very large class at a state school or a small private school. Those are things that show a lot about you. We would avoid adding any high school experiences. This was a long time ago. And when people see when you were in the early 2000s and mid 2000s doing cool stuff, great. That's an opportunity to talk about it in your interview if you really think it's essential for them to know a little bit more about who you are. 
a lot of people ask me like, okay, if I worked in a restaurant, should I put that experience in my ERAS? Yes, certainly. If you were working during medical school, if you were able to hold a job and study for your USMLE or Comlex exams, wow, I'm amazed. Those sorts of things show a lot of work ethic traits that are very essential to showcase. If you were able to study as a preclinical medical student or as a clinical medical student, those are things that people will want to see. I had a program director who once asked me about one of my work jobs that had nothing to do with healthcare because he wanted to see that I could be a person and interact with people, not just in the field of healthcare in a hospital. And do not lie. So, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I volunteered for two hours at the animal shelter or the food bank. That's great. One, does it need to go onto your ERAS application? No, because it dilutes your important experiences. And if you only work two hours, I'm really impressed that you're being honest, but don't try to enlarge that to 50 if you really only work two. So everybody always asks me, should I go for the bullet points or should I go for the sentences? And my advice is go for the bullet points because remember, they don't have a lot of time to save through your application. So you want to be able to get the most amount in for the little time that they have to read. And bullet points are a way for people to avoid being wordy, which typically a lot of people do when they write in sentence form. When you have the reason for leaving box, make it simple and to the point. So did you graduate college? Did you move to a new city? Those are all essential ways to be able to keep that box with something in it. Do you always need something in it? Obviously, if you are still doing that activity, then no. But try to put something in there so people don't question why you suddenly left that opportunity. Don't add conferences you attend. I was reading through ERAS applications once and saw people were telling that they you know, went to the APA conference or that they went to the AAOS conference for ortho. Really, nobody cares. Do a lot within that conference to get mentors and get advocates for you and meet people and talk to them because those will help throughout the entirety of your career, but they don't need to be there if you just were an attendee. If you presented, that will go in the research section. Everything that isn't research or paid work goes under volunteer experiences. A lot of people will commonly confuse the work aspect and the volunteer aspect of their experience section. Not everyone has a supervisor for all of their activities. So if you don't have one on a few, that is okay. Don't sweat it. And then like we discussed, really be honest about how many hours a week you actually spent doing that experience because people are going to know if you exaggerate. Research. So this can be a lot, really a lot of work for those that don't have a lot of research to think about things that they've done. So it's really important that you realize you can include posters, presentations, Grand rounds and workshops at presentations count and podium presentations, but try to avoid if you gave a presentation in front of a small group of 10 other medical students. That doesn't necessarily count as a presentation. Publications, even if they aren't in the specialty you're applying, that is okay. For example, I applied into the field of psychiatry, but I had interest in preventative medicine, so had a publication and a poster within that field. And people ask, so why PrevMed? You're going into psychiatry. Are you dual applying? And I said, no, but that was my interest. We all know that interests change throughout medical school. As a first year medical student, you may not know that you want to be a radiologist. And then come third year, you do an elective in it and love it, but happen to have research in OB-GYN, for example. So that is okay. The idea of research is showing that you understand how to do it and understand what research actually means. It is essential that you review any poster, publication, presentation that you actually list in this area prior to your interviews. People are going to ask you questions specifically. They may ask you about the methods that you used. They may ask about the statistics. So even if you were not a part of doing the statistics for a specific project and you were a part of the writer or the data collector, it is really important that you understand all aspects of that specific publication. 
if you are working on a research project that hasn't been submitted, as we all know, research takes a lot of time to publish. Even if you were someone who did a research year, you may not actually have a publication ready to put in that experience uh, in that section as a citation. But you can add it to the experience section and put in detail where that manuscript is in the actual phase of research. Are you about to submit it? Are you doing the survey? Are you working on the stats? Where is that project right now in the course of the timeline of research? Hobbies and interests. This is the most important section and most people overlook it as an applicant. So I want you to be really detailed in this section. It is essential that you include about four to six hobbies because a lot of people wanna know who you are, what you do outside the hospital. They know why you went into medicine. They likely know a lot from your personal statement about what specialty you chose, but make sure you actually include things that you do outside of the world of medicine. So avoid generic ones. I have seen so many people talk about traveling, cooking, baking, hiking. Great. A lot of people enjoy those, but be more spe specific. So where do you like to travel? Tell me about your adventures. What do you like to cook or bake? Where do you like to hike? These are all things that are going to differentiate candidates. And these are a lot of things that people can talk about when you're actually in the interview because people want to learn more about you. They just want to talk about, you know, a lot of things that they can connect to and have a conversation with you about. So these are some examples. A LaCroix connoisseur. So Alex, uh, my fiance, actually used this one uh, during his interviews and he got so many questions about LaCroix. People asked him, what's your favorite flavor? When was LaCroix invented? Who invented it? So, you know, you're going to get a lot of random questions because people really want to know if you actually have an interest in the subject matter. Cooking without a recipe, exploring national parks, maybe even talk about the fact that you have one of those stamp books and have explored 22 national parks. Be specific. Pre-COVID, obviously, if you were a Trader Joe's and Costco sample expert, uh, calligraphy, meditation, juggling, ping pong champ, amateur magician, you know, these are all ways in which you can showcase a lot of your personality. Do not leave this section blank. We had one of our podcast interviewees who left this section blank on accident. And he said a lot of people made fun of him, which, you know, may have worked for him and he made a joke out of it. But do not just put one, don't put two, please put four to six in this box. Medical school honors and awards. So not all of us were AOA. If you listen to our podcast, not all of us were gold humanism. I was neither. So for me, this box was a struggle because I was like, uh oh, what am I going to put here for medical school honors and awards? So it's really important that if you think about whether you got a scholarship, even if it's given by your school, even if it's a very small amount of money, every single award counts. Number these or put a dash mark, add the name, add the year, and then put a semicolon with a very brief explanation. If you didn't get the award in medical school and you got it in college, that is okay too. You can put those in there. It's really important that you have something in this box. Please don't leave it blank. Letters of recommendation. So always leave the right to view your letter. Some people have the opportunity to help write their letter or some people may have already seen their letter, but either way, always waive the right to view your letter. I had seen none of my letters prior to when they were submitted, so I had no idea what they talked about. If your program that you're applying to requires a department chair letter, make sure you include that. Read the application instructions, because if you don't have that yet it's required, your application's totally void, and they're just gonna throw it into the trash bin. If someone hasn't uploaded a letter yet, it is September 19th. That is pretty close to the deadline. You want to send them a reminder. Don't feel embarrassed when you send them a reminder. This application is essential to be in on time, and it is very important that that letter of recommendation is also in at that time that ERES is submitted. 
So during your season, you can update your letter of recommendation writer. So tell them, yes, I'm so excited. I got an interview at my dream program. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten an interview at XYZ program. Would you be able to reach out and lend a hand? Or do you have any ideas for me? Because I would really love to be in St. Louis, Missouri, since my partner is there. You also want to send your letter of recommendation writer as a thank you note. You can't thank them enough. They are busy. They have a job, a clinical job, and you are asking them to do something in addition to that. So please, if you haven't already sent them a thank you note and they have uploaded your letter of recommendation already, please thank them. And then, of course, when you match, also send them a note of update to say, hey, I matched. I matched at XYZ program. I'm super excited. I hope to connect with you in the future in my career because recognize that they not only can be a mentor during your medical school experience, but they can also be someone that is a mentor for you later on. They are going to be the ones that help you. If you have questions about fellowship, they are somebody that are willing to lend a hand because they're likely going to be in a field that you're applying to or know someone in the field that could help you later on down the road. So before submitting your ERAS, it is very important that you've all read your Dean's Letter and your MSPE, which is the other uh, name for it. It's important that you've read it, you understand what's in it, because people may ask you, well, you're uh, applying to psychiatry, but your general surgery attending said XYZ about you. Tell me a little bit more about that. So you never know when they're going to quote that letter. And if you look shocked with your eyes and your facial expressions, that's obviously not a good thing. Have five people look over your personal statement for spelling and grammar. This also counts for the entire ERAS application, which I mentioned below. You can actually print out your ERAS application, which I would highly recommend because you can also see the way that it's formatted with the dashes that you use, with the numbering that you use. It's really good because that's how a lot of programs are actually going to be reviewing your applications. They'll print them out. You know, the coordinator will print them out and they'll actually go through them and highlight things when they know whether or not they want to give you an interview. If you add a language, let's say that you are fluent in Mandarin, ask uh, yourself, do I actually speak that language fluently? Because someone can actually speak with you in that language during your interview. I know a program director who speaks French and one of my friends who also speaks French and said she was fluent, went into the interview and he conducted the entire interview in French. So be sure that you are actually being honest in regards to your fluency. Once you certify and submit, remember, you can't update your application aside from that contact information in the biographical section. You could upload letters of recommendation later after you submit, but I'm hopeful by the time that you are submitting your application, all of those letters of recommendation are in.